pork chops they typically and they've got <laughs> this pineapple coconut and I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. I love just smelling it when I'm walking around. That sounds so good. Oh yeah, you all the you're using it. Confusing, confusing. I just realized I have my balls kind of just sitting here and I'm like, oh yeah. Not happens there. Still learning all this stuff. Oh, it's for your answer. No, no, it's not. It's the one on the far right. Far right. Oh, no, no, it's a swipe to the right to pull up your camera. The other way. Uh -huh. At the very bottom. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. This is Angela with Upcycle Arts. And today is our last virtual Upcycle workshop day. And we will be with local artist Arco, which we're super, super excited about. You've probably seen his stuff at the Mint literally everywhere around Charlotte, and he's already a recycle artist, which is really cool. So today we will be painting um, some bottles. So we gave you the bottle, the spray paint, some paint markers, and uh, we're gonna start off with sketching everything out. So if you can grab a piece of paper and a pencil as well, that would be awesome. Um, so we'll be monitoring the comments. If you have any questions, please type them in. Um, and this workshop is brought to you by Culture Blocks, which is a partnership funded by Mecklenburg County. So thank you to Mecklenburg County and thank you to the Arts and Science Council for setting this all up. And we're gonna get started in a little bit. So, thank you. So, I wonder if this will be upside down. Now that I'm thinking about it. Should I have switched? It looks good. That's right. Hello. How's it going, everybody? I'm Arco. Welcome to Painting Bottles. Um, so I am a recycle artist here from Charlotte. I enjoy using mainly cardboard to create art. And uh, really anything else that I can get my hands on is just extra fun for me. So I had a bunch of these bottles and uh, I actually enjoy doing this activity. It's kind of fun for me. So uh, in your kit, we had a bottle, we had a can of paint, we had a black paint marker and a white paint marker. Uh, if y'all didn't get one, you also need a sheet of paper. It's gonna be scrap paper with a pencil because we're just gonna like draw ideas. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. So first thing that we wanna do is you wanna take your paint and we're gonna shape this can. I have actually three different ones that I wanted to try out. I've got two bottles, so this is gonna be fun. Let's see. You're gonna have to shake the cans for at least 30 seconds. Take them hard. If you want to spin them like that, you can spin them. Um, this is just to agitate the paint and make sure it mixes so that when you spray, it won't come out clear, it won't come out a weird color. It won't come out. No cloud. It's okay. That's what the, uh, the spinning makes it less loud if you spin it. It's nice. If you have to just <laughs> Yeah, JG, say hi. Did you say what? Someone said hi. Oh. Hey. Oh, JG. Let's see where we are. Okay. You know what? Let me slide this open. Forward and let's slide this. Yes. There we go. That's kind of what you're about, right? There, we got the pins, we got the markers, we got the bottom, we got the paper. We'll go with this one. Okay. See, okay, go. Let's get this out of the way. 
Okay. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure you get a cap. I know that you have uh, gold caps. I have a different one, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we want to do a test spray. So the test spray is to make sure that we get all the crud out of the valve and it actually is shooting color. So that when we do actually do paint the bottle, it's gonna paint the color instead of painting crud. Um, and I just take a. Uh, you can go outside for this. I have a little kind of half pot set up. Let's take a can. Oh, that cat busted. So, if this one, try it again. Okay, there we go. Oh, sorry guys, yeah. Okay, let me do it with a different can. I didn't shake these beforehand, so uh, you just want to hold your can upright. I know that everybody has like maybe this much in their can. Uh, so when you do spray it, do your test spray, you want to make sure you hold the can straight up and down. And it went from a clear thing to like a nice pretty blue like what's on cap. So once you've established that you've got a test spray and you got the color coming out right, we want to get our bottles and uh, just take a look at yours and decide what you want to be the front and what you want to be the back. Um, for for me, I like I really do enjoy painting on like these little fifth bottles. Um, I like the concave surface as the back, and I like the round surface as the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back and that's where I'm going to add my color for this bottle. So all you do is again, make sure your can is sitting straight up and down. Make sure that you can spray directly in the center. You can go anywhere really. If you want to paint the whole side of the bottle, you can do that. I like just adding a pop of color in the middle because I like being able to see through the rest of it. So I'm going to add a, let's see, I'm going to take a test spray. Cool. We're going to do it. Pop a color right there. Pretty simple. Now when I spin it around, you see you're going to be able to see that blue through the thing. So now when we do our white on top or our black on top, you're going to have this blue background. Um, if you wanted to do this on your own, you can also start sketching on the back and then paint on top of it. And then you'll have a nice design sticking out on the front side. So I'm going to set this bottle here for now. Actually, you know what? Oh, we're wrong. I'm going to do a quick spray with this other one to show you guys that there are many different ways to do it. I'm going to do a green on the back here. And then on the front, I'm going to add a little bit of this pink. Oh, cool. There we go. So now we see we have that green in the background. We have some pink in the front. And now we're just going to let both of these bottles dry to the side for now. Um, can you see the paper? Can everyone see the paper? Let's see. So what I need you to do with the sheet of paper that you got is fold it in half and then fold it in half again. That way we have... Well, one, two, three different pieces we can work with. Um, you don't have to. I usually like just kind of putting the shape of the bottle there so that I kind of know where I'm drawing. Um, but if your bottle's a square, just go ahead and use the whole. Actually, you know what? That is about the right size. This is about the size of the bottle that I have. Uh, so I'll probably just use that whole flat surface. Um, what we want to do is we want to think about what we want to sketch. Uh, I obviously like skulls and uh, hamsa hands and plants and leaves and, and all that type of stuff. So we're going to take, uh, what do you say, we'll take five minutes. You don't have to do four different sketches. You can do one sketch and be ready with it. You can do four, five, six, seven sketches, it doesn't matter. Just We're gonna take five minutes to sketch and give your brain a little bit of time to like, figure out what it wants to draw. And uh, when we come back, I'll be sharing what I'm drawing as I go through them. And then when uh, we get back together and get started, um, we're working with these markers. So 
everybody just start sketching. If you have any questions about anything I'm doing here or about any other art that I've made or programs or public stuff that we're doing, uh, feel, reach out, ask. Um, we're here to answer questions. All right. Oh, yeah, I got the time right there. So when I sketch, I generally like to do kind of tight lines. Um, I notice that if I leave things to chance, or have like just a bunch of hairs, it kind of slows me down because then I don't understand or I don't uh, see clearly what I'm doing or the direction that it's going. Uh, we have white and black. So remember, you're gonna be able to, you can pick one or the other, you can use them both. I like using them both, especially black outlines with white accents, like dots and little things all around. It's really nice. I'll use the white here for the eyes and a couple of the other different little designs and things that I have. Um, I don't really know why it's so easy. Uh, do you guys have any artists or anything that you'd like to follow that do anything like this? I'm always looking for, for new artists to check out. Um, I've got several, if you guys wanted to look them up on Instagram, um, and we'll show you in a bit. Um, or I can just tell you, there's, there's a guy named uh, Garbage Beauty, I believe is his Instagram, and he does calligraphy on found objects in the street. Oh, that's cool. So he takes trash and he writes messages. Uh, he's... I want to say he's French because the majority of them are in French. Uh, but he could be Canadian. I'm not quite sure. Uh, that's one. There's another artist. Art is trash from Spain, and he actually uses garbage bags and also found object trash and paints on top of it, paints walls, and does a lot of uh, revolution, not revolutionary, but um, culture call out type of stuff. Where you know if the governor, the government is doing something that's kind of jacked up. Like he comments on it and comments about like uh, society's standards of beauty and what is art, uh, what success is, greed. Uh, he's a really, really interesting guy. He's been working for a while. Too many. He's been working for a while. Um, there's a guy shrine on who actually builds things out of recycled materials. So his whole, oh man, his whole house, his whole home, his backyard has like bottle sidewalks. So the bottles are buried face down in the ground. And so the tops of the bottles stick out and you get able to walk across them. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. It's too much to describe. He uses everything he can get his hands on to really decorate everything around him. All right, so this is gonna be one design for the bottle. Pretty good. Uh, we got about a minute and a half left. If you guys want to try, maybe knock out another quick sketch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I find symmetry is really nice um, when I'm designing. Okay, I, I only busted out two. Uh, I wonder how many guys, how many y'all did? How many did you guys get? Can you say? I'm looking at comments. There we go. Yeah, that's tricky with the feedback. It's really it's hard, hard to, to hear, hear me the with the music on. Got you. There we go. Is that better? I hope, Carol. Okay. JG says they made two sketches. You got two sketches. Dope. All right. So now, uh, in that five minutes, your bottle should have dried. Ooh, I'm kind of looking at mine. And it looks like there is, let me see if we can do it. Um, it looks okay. like there's still wet a little bit right there. You see where it's kind of shiny right here? So we can just blow on it. You know what? That blue one might be done. Yeah, there's a blue one that's done. Besides, I'm not going to be really doing anything on this side. Um, okay, cool. My blue bottle is ready to go, which actually works out great because I had this first sketch that I did. Uh, that one actually... Kind of works out nice if it's nice with this thing the skull will go right there in the middle and i'll have the black and white designs coming out all around the edges so uh let me guys know when you are ready to do this part well i gotta tell you anyway the first part is you got to make sure you charge and pump your pens so same thing with the cans we're just going to shake them for let's call it like 10 seconds one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now we should be able to take the caps off. You're going to notice your nib is like a brown kind of color. Uh, what you're going to do is find the paper. This is probably a good place to do it. And don't like jam the pen down hard, but just place a tip on the paper and push it down a few times. You're going to see. You're gonna see the paint start to bleed down, down the nib. This tip is called the nib right here. Um, you're gonna see the paint start to bleed down the nib and once it fills in all the way, your nib is gonna be like a light yellow. Um, but you should be able to make a couple of test strokes on the paper and you'll see that it is like pushing the white paint out. Um, you know, I probably could have started it with the black one. So I haven't done this one yet. So again, I'm just gonna pump it a couple of times. Gently, again, we're not jamming it because I don't want to bust the nib. But you'll see it start to do that thing where it runs. You're gonna see the ink start, paint start to run up into the tip. And I usually pump it until the paint is like right there at the edge and then I stop. And so you see this one. Is also pushing out paint. Good. So we should have two markers now, a white and a black. Um, ooh, take your sketch. And I, put, I just keep my sketch beside it there. Uh, I don't, so this is going to be the pre sketch. I don't really do anything to prep the surface at the bottle. Maybe if you want to get a paper towel or something, you wipe it down. Um, I did that with this stuff before, right before we came in. So uh, am I centered up on everybody? Let's see. There we go, there we go, pretty good. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna start sketching. Well, not sketching, I guess really, we're just doing, this is gonna be the final, final bit. What's really nice is if you feel like you made a bad mark or are unhappy with how it came out, you can, you can take a razor blade and actually scrape that paint right off and it'll be clean again. Uh, usually you can use like a paint thinner or even, uh, I like using rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, and it wipes down all That's of really that neat. stuff. So you can actually do this project again and again and again with the same bottle. Uh, paint thinner will work on the paint. Rubbing alcohol will not work on the paint. So let's get started. Um, I always just start with my skull. Oh man, these markers look really nice. Oh good. <laughs> yeah, these were really nice. And the skull in my sketch came out so good. So now I'm kind of nervous. I'm like, oh man, I, I made it a little taller. Oh, well, it's all right. 
not a big deal. Um, for working in glass, sometimes you gotta do, ooh, I bumped it, there we go. Sometimes you gotta do things a little backwards. So I have to lay down anything that's gonna be filled in and then outlined, like the eyes are gonna be filled in white and outlined in black. I like to put the white down first and then put the black on top of it. Um, but I could just make a black circle and then fill it in with the white if I wanted to. And the white comes out great too. I'm gonna hold on to these markers. Of course. <laughs> I like these. Oh gosh. Make sure you have a napkin or paper towel nearby. I usually wipe it on my clothes. Uh, don't recommend. I just got this new shirt and I just wiped. Oh no! Almost, almost wiped on it. Do you want me to grab you a paper towel? Oh no, it's it's fine. The the pants are the things I can wipe on. <laughs> the shirt's from Two G's. Uh, he just he just uh, printed these there. Nice. They're really cool. He's got like the Sherwin Williams logo that he <laughs> smart that he adopted. All right, so we're gonna have a big head, big head <laughs> skull. So instead of outlining that immediately, I'm gonna let that paint dry. Um, and here, instead of doing, usually I do like my dagger with the two little bits on it. This time I'm just gonna do like a flare, a super crooked flare. There we go. Got my three dots over the eyes. The three dots over the eyes. Got an X there. Is everybody doing all right so far? I hope so. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna cool it on messing with the skull area for a little bit while I while all that black dries. I'm going to go ahead and start working on some of the designs on the outside. <laughs> that one and that one. Done and done. I'm going to do this one this one next. This is not my process typically, but I just realized it's really easy for me to be like, done, 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 done on these things. So let's see if you make it even, straight across. There we go. One, two, three. I'll probably do that one. I'll probably do these also in black. Those four squigglies. And I'll bring them a little bit closer to the corners. So what do you suggest if people have like rounder bottles? If you have a rounder bottle, um, you can do the same thing. Uh, what's nice with the round bottles is you can actually create a piece that runs all the way around the bottle itself. Or you can, um, what I've done in the past is I've taken the section and I've framed it out, just made like a square. This one I have to get creative for because it's two colors. And then I'm able to fill in everything from there. Um, and I just say like, that's the front of the bottle. Um, or, you know, you can always do something on the back and on the front. I have a couple of bottles where I actually did some designs on the back of the bottle. Then I painted it and then I turned the bottle over and I did my guy on the front of it or whatever design on the front of it. And it looks really nice having like that distance between the two uh, different pattern nice. techniques. So what I'll probably do is when I finish up the front of this, I'll probably flip it over and do some little details around the edge. Um, you won't be able to see anything that's going to be on top of the paint. So everywhere that's not yeah. painted is what I'll be able to, to paint on. Interesting. All right, let's get this white out. Mm -hmm. That's right there. Feels dry. That right there. Um, I usually have a system that I don't rigorously follow. 
uh, and that is do all of the big stuff first and then worry about the details last. Uh, I get not overwhelmed, but I put stuff way out of order and I end up just mixing and matching details and larger ideas. So Melissa Studart said so cool. Melissa Studart. Thank you. Thank you. I hope yours is coming out so cool as well. Oh, I can back now. Also, important thing to remember is your sketch is not law. Uh, there are tons of, the sketch is just a suggestion of kind of where stuff can go. But remember, you're free to move it. It's your sketch, so you're free to move it around. You're free to take elements out, add elements in. Um, I'm embarrassed to say, well, they're not for many times. It's all right, we're getting some work out in today, too. So, is everybody all right so far? Just wanted to double check and make sure. I'm going to do these little like pattern designs. And sometimes if I do have a sketch, I get caught up in trying to make it exact. And so that's not what we're trying to do here necessarily. So now, so line doubles out, line doubles out. So I'm split in the middle. Line, line, line. Go. I do like to finish the patterns though. So if like my line double dot isn't done, like I'll come back and make sure that it's done before I move on to the next one. Um, the line patterns and things, this, these bottle projects are really good for like this kind of patterning stuff. They're also really good if you have, um, if you have two colors or two tones of a color, so if you have like a light blue and a dark blue, uh, it's really cool to do like a fade on the back where you just do like a dark blue line at the bottom and a light blue line on top. And you can have like two different areas to play with. Uh, I, I do lots of different little experiments and stuff like that just to, to see what I can make. Let's see. Are there any questions or anybody like figure some cool stuff out while they were messing with the markers and the bottle or anything? It's dry. It's dryish. Do, do, do. There we go. Man, I really want to. Hmm. I might show you that razor technique right now. Let's see if this works. So I like, I obviously I've got a bunch of these exacto razors because I do a lot of cardboard cutting, but I'm going to bring the head down just a little bit. I'm going to take the razor. Oh, nice. If you see it, the paint, because it sits right on top of the glass, usually comes off super clean. This is why I encourage uh, adults with kids and stuff to get paint markers and let their kids paint on the windows, because it, it really is not that hard to clean up. Um, and it's a lot of fun to see what kids get into when they have like a different kind of surface and a different kind of, uh, you have to have a kind of a different approach. All right, so it was up here, I'm going to read down a lot. I said I bring it down a lot, and I brought it like down a quarter inch, not even. Oh, well, it does look way better now to me. It looks more like what I wanted it to look like. I can bring these guys down a little bit more. All right, let's see. 
looks nice so far. Hmm. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'll say I like to get really. I won't say technical, but sometimes I get a little obsessive about making sure that things are like just just right. Oh well, so I'll have to come back and fix that now because the white went over too much. But we'll worry about that in a minute. Um, looking at this bottle now, let's see. I can see that. Oh, cool. I can see that. Okay, what am I going to do? If I do a black circle on the outside edge there of that blue, it'll actually look really cool sticking up here. And then I can do some like little dots on the edge of the circle on the back. So I can't lay it down directly yet because I'm pretty sure there's still some wet parts. So I'm kind of holding it up in the air, but I'm going to take this black line. I'm going to run it around right here. Additionally, since the paint is dry, I can take that razor blade and I can scratch into this paint um, to cut out whatever I don't want to have. So if I did want to like trim up that edge and make it nice and flat and clean, instead of having it splatter kind of fade out, I come back and trim it up. I like how it's faded right there, so I'm going to keep it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this circle on the back. Oh, man. I keep on bumping these guys. There <laughs> we go. Renee says she loves it and ends up with a really great vintage bottle. It's already kind, it's already kind of matte. And the paint and the markers are great. That's awesome. Yay. I'm really, really glad to hear that. That is so cool. All right. Uh, let's do this. Let's... So my circle is going to be go past the bounds of the thing. So I'm really just going to. And pretend it's there and then bring it back around this way. There we go. See how that looks. It's kind of wavy and wobbly, but it's okay. We can just say that the glass is distorting the <laughs> curve a little bit. Um, now I can also, you see how it changes from, from surface to surface. There we go. So just to accentuate the circle in the back, I'm going to add some white um, to that back also. Let me make sure this. Holding it up can be kind of a pain. So I'm going to make sure this is dry. Nope, not dry. <laughs> so, where did it come off though? Oh, right here. So, all right, we'll just put our finger in the bottle like that and keep going. Like I said, I'm just going to add some dots around the edge. Sometimes I evenly space them, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. All right, now how does that look? Ooh, that looks nice. Ooh, it disappears with the paper. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, uh, I feel like I'm pretty close to Done. I I really do want to add more, so here's what I'm gonna do. In the back here, I'm gonna add my upside down crown. I really, really like this symbol. Um, it's in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of my work, and we're in the Queen City, and so the idea is that there are no kings here in the Queen City. Um, I also, uh, in like graffiti and street art, call a king like somebody that gets up all over the city and does like really, really good work. Um, and not that there aren't any kings here. There are some amazing, amazing graffiti guys here um, and street artists that go, just go out and paint. But it's becoming a lot more of a community which is really nice like there is obviously the clear division between graffiti and street art um but interacting with these guys is way easier than it used to be uh there was kind of a barrier for entry before um 
just because it's uh graffiti guys really are culture keepers like they have an it's more or less like a, a technical skill that's passed down from from writers to writers including their names the way they use cans the way they paint lines um and so charlotte actually has a lot of uh, graffiti like graffiti graffiti history and graffiti is anything like letters that are illegal that's what graffiti is so if you go out and you see big painted letters Typically, you'd say that's graffiti, unless they're like a, for a sign. And writers here in Charlotte, well, here in the U.S., they don't really consider anybody that does characters graffiti, uh, graffiti writers. Um, that's here in the U.S. and in Europe. Uh, but there's so many nuances. Like, I'm just overly generalizing. There's so many nuances to it that... Uh, we could get down and dirty with all the little details and go back and forth, but generally, graffiti is it's just a very secretive and really, really interesting and cool culture. I really encourage you to uh, enjoy graffiti, and if you see it, you know, you don't, don't report it, like, enjoy it. Try and figure out what the letters are. Try and see what they wrote. Try and read around it. There's always little messages on the sides of it. It's just it's nice. Same with street art, too. Um, street art usually has a meaning. So if you can find out who the artist is, uh, it's really easy to reach out and just, you know, ask. Or uh, even make up your own interpretation. That's something that we really enjoy too, is like hearing other people's interpretations of our work. See, you can't even see it. It's great. Secret message on the outside mm -hmm. of the bottle. All right, so the last thing I need to do, what's great is now I can lay this down because it's concave. I don't have to worry about Touching that wet paint, do something here. And the last little bit, I'm gonna say, I keep, <laughs> I keep <laughs> on doing that. Say, mm. There we go. I want to say, no, we're not done yet. Okay, now we're done. All right, I want to say that I am finished with this bottle. So I just add a little signature at the top. Oh, I didn't put a 704 or a CLT on it. That's just gonna, here. Sorry, staple things to put on. Oh, and as for all that all the info on like graffiti and street art, like these are all personal opinions. So that's, it'll definitely vary from person to person. Um, I'm sure there are things that I've said that true writers would be like, no. Um, so really, um, that was, I guess, an editorial, <laughs> an editorial for my street art and graffiti knowledge, but I will say I, I enjoy street art. Street art is anything that's not really letters and graffiti. So all the characters and things that I do, all the free art, all like the murals, all the all that other kind of art that you see, uh, that's all street art. Because it's in the street, it's intended to be art and not necessarily like a shout out to the person themselves. Um, and it tends to be more, I want to say more engaging with the public because street artists tend to be more open with uh, meeting people and uh, talking to them about their work. All right, I th I'm gonna say I think I'm done now, but more than likely I will add to this. I'll probably <laughs> add like a little black highlight or, or shadow to the numbers. In fact, you know what, I'll wait for that to dry and that'll be the last thing I do. In the meantime, I can add some black on this. Yeah, you can, don't ever feel like you're gonna go overboard on this stuff either. There is so much you can add and subtract that. There we go. 
And really, I guess I should lay down the black first and then come on top of it with the white. Because now I have to come back with the, with the white. Yeah, now I have to come back with the white. Take this and fan it. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or anything? When or how did the skull become my signature design? Uh, so I started um, the skull idea for me was just I've always drawn them all of my all of my life. I've been enamored by skulls. Um, the idea when Arco finally surfaced is that the skull is typically used as a symbol of danger, poison, avoid, death. Um, just has these really negative connotations. It's something that we all have and we all share. Like, it's part of the human body. And so my concept for, like, uh, was, take, was to take the skull and reimagine it as something that unifies us all. Um, and that doesn't have that negative connotation. So that's why my guys are always smiling and giving kind of positive messages or like an alternative outlook to a difficult situation. Um, because I did want to twist that idea that, you know, the skull is, is the skull isn't a bad thing. It encases our brain. It encases uh, who we are and everything that we are. Um, it encases what brings our consciousness into this dimension. So like you got to treat it especially you got to be kind to it um and it's it's just fun they're just really fun to draw you can you can make them so many different ways that i just they just became part of my character so all of my masks are skulls or like have that skull element um my character is like the skull head see like i just that's my guy but ever since i started the skull has been uh, the main focus of my character development. Let's okay, come back in with the white. Looking over here growling and stuff. Come on, dude. There's nobody here. <laughs> that dog is like five houses down, bro. Chill. Hope he's shut up in his room right now. His room is just great. He loves his room. Um, but I have all the doors open. It's such a nice day. Um, but you can hear everything. And so he's reacting to everything that happens outside because he's a good house dog. He <laughs> loves being home. And if we're out, he wants to go home unless we're skating. Did I do this side already? Okay. I'm going to say that I am officially done. With this bottle, I've got my No King's crown on the back. I have my scully design on the front. I just realized I'm not holding it center to everybody's camera. So here you go. What do you guys think? I hope you like it. Um, if you have finished your bottle or if you're on your way to finishing your bottle, that is awesome. Uh, if you want to tag us, Upcycle Arts and Arco.clt, I'd love to repost the stuff that you guys have done. That's uh, one of the other things that I really enjoy about, about like doing projects with people and with the community is sharing that experience and sharing in those projects and like, sharing the results of the projects. Um, if you enjoyed doing this, 
feel free to take a walk down a road. I'm sure you can find bottles all along the side of the road. Um, any other kind of materials, cardboard boxes, pieces of wood, plastic uh, containers, broken cell phones. Like you can really paint and draw on everything. And my tip is always, if you don't like it, finish it and go leave it somewhere for somebody else to take home. Cause more than likely someone will find some value in some of the art that you made. I can say that that's what I started doing with a lot of my stuff when I didn't like it, I would still put it out and it still brought somebody else joy. Like it was, it was something that maybe wasn't meant for me to experience fully, but it gave somebody else a chance to feel something uh, that they wouldn't have felt otherwise that day. So I am at the end of my spiel. Yeah. Uh, I'm here to take questions. Like we can hang, you want to hang out another like five minutes? Sure. Yeah. We can see what's up. leave it open. Yeah. I'm going to put the, put that in here. Here's our other bottle. It is actually dry now. Nice. Let's see. Um, it's 1246 right now. Yeah. 10 minutes and we'll wrap it up. If that works for you. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Cool. All right, I'm going to turn the music up a little bit. Again, we're going to keep on watching the, the screens and making sure that we're keeping up with comments and questions and stuff. Uh, I don't have any more stories really to tell. I mean, unless you guys ask for a story. I don't know. Ask me for something. Let's see. Maybe we can figure out something to talk about. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm going to start working on this guy. Hmm. Carol said, love how your bottle turned out and the information about street art was really interesting. Thank you. That's, yeah, part of a lot of what I do is also to really promote street art Ooh. and graffiti and the appreciation for those murals and stuff. Um, that's why that's why I do free art, uh, free art drops. So if you look at my stories on Instagram, you'll see, I'll say free art in this area, it's a scavenger hunt. So if you can recognize kind of where it is, you are free to go out and take it home with you. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to interact with people. That's why I also go paint with my friends in places that don't have paint. Uh, I also work with Talking Walls, uh, which is the mural festival here in Charlotte. And uh, it's every October. You can check them out on Instagram, also Talking Walls Charlotte. Uh, you may have noticed the past three years, we've had a huge influx of murals. Um, from not just local artists, which we have a ton of, but also uh, national and international artists. Last a year, well, last year was pandemic uh, talking wall. So they were local and regional. Uh, but the year before that, we brought in people from Colombia, from Germany, um, year before that from Mexico, from, it's just like, we have a, a very, we have a very, not a mission, but we're trying to find a way to bring the world to Charlotte since Charlotte doesn't necessarily go out into the world and show them like all of these different styles and the beauty of all the colors and messages and designs out there. Uh, we're trying to put as much paint in as many places as we can. And a lot of people have different ways of viewing it. A lot of people don't like some of the things that we're doing and it's like, well, not everyone has to like every single thing, you know, but I guarantee you if I can bring out 10 artists and they can paint 10 different murals, you're not going to hate all 10 of them, you know, and that's the whole point. Someone's going to like something that's that you don't like. You're going to like something someone else doesn't like. Um, but everyone's going to be able to find something that speaks to them and resonates with them. We've got a couple of questions. Oh, well, cool. yeah. Kelly says, love it. Thanks. And Anusha says, thank you for sharing your talent. You are very welcome. And both of you. Thank you. On YouTube, we have JG said, do you ever scrape the paint off on the part and on the paint part and draw in the negative space? Uh, sometimes I will draw. I will actually scrape a drawing into the negative space. I have before. Oh, man. How do I use my razor so fast? Right there. 
Oh, I didn't put the blade back on. Um, yeah, but but doing that is definitely another uh, way to work it. I have a, I was gonna say I have a bottle here, but I don't think that's the one. But yeah, you can actually take it. Ooh, we didn't work on that. Did not work on that one. Let's see, I'm gonna try and do an X. Yeah, so cutting on the paint's a little different. And it takes a little more work. Because the paint is a little stickier. Um, but you can come up with some really cool effects. Now this blade is not optimal, obviously, for cutting for cutting the paint on this glass. I like the uh, I like the box blades, the square blades, to do this kind of stuff. Uh, like major area scraping, but for smaller detail stuff, I've used these razors before. But yeah, so we've got a nice, like, kind of gray area there, and I can actually paint in right there something, and that back will interact with whatever's up on the front. So, nice. and Renee asks, Where can we find more of your artwork? More of my artwork. So, uh, I have murals around the city. I do a lot of collaborations. So the majority of the murals that are here in Charlotte, I've collaborated with Owl, my partner on, and uh, like we've been, uh, we've been collaborating for a long time. So we're working right now on independentizing ourselves. So uh, a lot of more of my own design ideas, painting on my own, same with her painting on her own and collaborating with other artists in the area. So um, let's see, there's over near, oh, what's it called? Scaly Bark and South Tryon. Scaly Bark and South Boulevard. Um, on the light rail side of that, there's a large mural uh, from Al and I. Also, if you're coming down North Tryon on uh, this coffee roasters they're really good they serve a bunch of different spots in the city pure intentions um we have a large mural there and every time that question comes up i'm like mm. i think the mint museum has a map of all of your murals too oh you, yeah because yeah, i yeah, googled yeah. you yeah yeah too. i think they've got an article the mint does oh there's one of them in row road right up from wendover an art walks way. oh yeah and if you go to art walks clt like and did a Great job of cataloging and categorizing all the murals there. Um, but I have several. I also have like hanging work, um, a lot of free art in different places. If you go to Sandwich Max on Monroe Road, they have a they have a large collection of a lot of my like early art, like my early free stuff that I would put out. If you go to Benny Pinello's and Noda, they have a palette of mine hanging up above the counter. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, the Spoke Easy over in Elizabeth, they have a neon sign that uh, PVR and I collaborated on. Oh man, that one was a really cool project. Uh, done by the neon lady, Deb the neon lady, who's the only neon person like in the city and in the area really that does real neon. Uh, she's super, super cool too. So let's see how that works. Oh yeah, see? How does that look? She's in the background, you guys can see it too. So for this one, what do we do? I feel like the pink gets a white. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you having a good day? So far? We got two more minutes, guys. Two more minutes of hanging out. Uh, if you want to get any last questions in, I'm going to see. That's my time challenge now. I'm going to see if I can actually do this bottle in that <laughs> amount of time. So 
sometimes I just like switching between colors. I get tired of using one, so I'll switch <laughs> to the other. It uh, It's actually a lot of fun because it keeps you on your toes and makes your brain think a little bit differently. Um, so with all this, since I'm using white as my main line, I don't want to add a lot, a lot of black, like in high concentrations, because it'll take away... Uh, It'll pull down because it has so, black has so much more weight than the white. Oh, those are two different sizes. Oh well, sometimes it happens. And I said this was fantastic. Thank you so much. Renee, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. So glad that you enjoyed it, and you were able to come. Let's see. What should I add? You should add like these. I'm just thinking, right. This bottle will probably be a free art drop. Um, so keep your eyes posted. So a little frame here. Oh, there's a timer. Well, almost. All right, last couple of things. Whatever. We'll just write it out. That's good. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We had, I had a great time. We had a great time here. Um, thank you for all the questions. I don't know what else to tell you. So I'll close it out. I'll just, yeah, <laughs> I'll just pass it off. <laughs> Still keep up here. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to this way. This. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, Arco, for making these awesome bottles. You're super um, welcome. If you appreciated um, this workshop, definitely follow Arco.clt. He posts some really cool stuff, and he'll do these free art drops, which are always fun. Um, and Upcycle Arts CLT. You can follow us, and if you liked the workshop, please consider donating at upcyclearts.org slash donate. Please donate. We're please trying donate. to bring creative reuse to Charlotte, so <laughs> thank you so much for participating, and we'll keep you posted on other stuff we're doing around Charlotte. Have a good weekend, everybody. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yeah. Boop.